Speaking question four. Speaking skill 10. Example question four, listening passage A, page 271. Now listen to a lecture on this topic in a physiology class. Okay, now I'm going to give you a few examples of how the different distribution and light sensitivities of these two types of photoreceptors affect visual perception. Now, you've probably observed these effects, but you may not have known the explanation before. Because only the rod cells are sensitive to very low light, say, at night or, or in a room lit by candlelight, you don't see colors in these situations. Think about it. At night, the cones don't function due to the faint light, only the rods. But because only the cones allow us to see in color, everything is black and white. It's only when there's more light, um, like under a street lamp at night or uh, when someone turns on the main lights in a dark room that things suddenly acquire color. You can also see effects of the sensitivity and distribution of the rods in action if you look at a very dim star in the sky. You might have noticed before that a star such as this can be seen if you look a little to the left or right of the star. But if you look directly at the star, uh, I mean center it in your field of vision, the star disappears. Move your focus a little away from the star and it suddenly reappears. This is because of the concentration of the very sensitive rods outside the center of your field of vision, a little to the left or the right, and the lower light sensitivity of the cone cells at the center of your field of vision. Example question 4, listening passage B, page 272. Now listen to a lecture on this topic in a business class. Let's look at a couple of cases to see the equity theory in action. We'll talk about this theory in terms of an imaginary employee. Let's call him Bill. In the first case, a co-worker of Bill's named Sally has the same job title as Bill and does the same amount of work. She makes a little less money, but she has more flexible hours. She can leave work earlier or come in later if she needs to, whereas Bill is paid a little extra to be available during certain set hours. He can't come and go like Sally can. Oh, and they have similar offices. In this situation, Bill will feel satisfied with his job if he values the extra money more than the flexibility of work hours. That's because, in his opinion, he receives equal or better return for his contribution than Sally does. According to the equity theory, Sally will also feel satisfied if she values the flexible hours more than the extra money. Even though she does the same amount of work as Bill or makes the same contribution, she knows that her schedule is much more flexible than Bill's. Sally is satisfied because the return for her contribution is more valuable to her than her co-worker Bill's would be. The second case is different. In the second case, a co-worker of Bill's named Tom has the same job title and set hours and does the same amount of work as Bill. But Tom makes less money and has a smaller office than Bill. So in this case, Tom will not feel satisfied because he receives a lower return for his contribution than his co-worker Bill does. Speaking Exercise 10 Number 1. Page 274. Now listen to a lecture on this topic in a geology class. Okay. Two hotspots will be familiar to you if you know anything about the geography of the United States. The first one is the Hawaiian island chain. As the Pacific plate moves to the northwest, the underlying hotspot stays in the same place. The hotspot causes a volcano to form on the ocean floor, which eventually emerges from the ocean and, over a long period of time, builds up an island. For example, the Big Island of Hawaii, whose volcano is still active. Now, as the plate moves away from the hotspot, 
the volcano it created dies out and the island breaks down due to erosion, eventually being consumed by the sea. This progression of eroding islands can be seen on the smaller islands of Hawaii, which are remnants of long-gone volcanoes. And to the northwest, under the sea, there is a chain of mountains in the Hawaiian waters. Meanwhile, a new volcanic island is forming to the southeast, over the location of a new hotspot. We can also see evidence of previous volcanoes, and a currently active one, in the middle of the North American plate. Yellowstone National Park sits atop a hot spot that is responsible for the geothermal activity there. Underneath the park, a massive volcano, more than 30 miles wide, powers the geysers that shoot hot water and steam high up into the air, and other such features that make the park so fantastic. To the south and west of the park, we find evidence of a series of gigantic craters from previous eruptions of supervolcanoes, indicating that the plate is sliding over the hot spot in a northeasterly direction. Even now, we can measure the slow rise of land in the park as the hot spot below builds up to what will eventually be a massive eruption of the supervolcano underneath the park. Number 2, page 275. Now listen to a lecture on this topic in a political science class. There are many ways that sample bias can affect the results of an election poll. The use of telephone surveys has always presented pollsters with several kinds of bias that have changed along with changes in technology. When telephones were less common among rural voters and poor voters, surveys conducted by telephone tended to exclude these people. This created an exclusion bias because people who did not have phones were underrepresented in or even excluded from the polls. As technology has made it possible for more people to replace their landlines at home with mobile cell phones, another bias has been introduced. Surveys conducted by landline overrepresent older and more rural people. That's because they are more likely to rely on a landline than to have gotten rid of it in favour of a cell phone, as younger, more urban individuals have done. Another type of bias that is always present in telephone surveys is the self-selection bias. That is, since you are not obligated to answer survey questions over the phone, those who don't care about or know little about the issues are more likely not to agree to answer the survey questions. On the other hand, those who are willing to answer the survey questions are people who may already have strong opinions and feel knowledgeable about the issues or political candidates. In all of these cases, the samples do not accurately represent the total population and so the results might reflect more heavily the views of urban people, the elderly, or people who are actively involved in politics. To accurately represent the entire population, statistical methods must be applied to correct for these biases. Number 3, page 275. Now listen to a lecture on this topic in a psychology class. Now, the most well-known human subject to demonstrate the function of explicit long-term memory is a man called H.M. To stop a condition that left him unable to work and live normally, he underwent a surgical procedure that destroyed his hippocampus. The unforeseen result was that H.M was unable to store any long-term explicit memories after his surgery. For instance, um, you could introduce yourself to him and have a conversation, then leave the room for a few minutes and return and repeat the same thing again. He was unable to remember the experience of meeting someone. Similarly, he could not remember any facts, such as what was happening in the world after his surgery. The memories of his life before his surgery weren't damaged, but he could not remember any facts or experiences after that. However, 
he was trained to trace a line through a puzzle-like maze while looking in a mirror. As you can understand, this is very difficult for people to do at first, but people can train themselves to do it. Now, H.M. practiced doing this many times, learning to coordinate his hand movements with what he saw in the mirror. He could, before he died, do it with remarkable skill. He had no explicit memory of ever having traced the lines in the mazes, and he couldn't explain why he was so good at it. But the implicit motor memory, the necessary coordination of eyes and hands needed for the task, was being stored, but clearly not by means of the hippocampus.